Hello everybody and welcome to the Witty Writer Show. I'm author Beth Wearsdale and I'm here with the fantastic Mark Gottlieb from Trident Media Group. Hello Mark. Hi, good to see you. Good to see everyone again. Nice to be back. I am so excited about today Mark because over the course of our various shows we've had so many comments and questions all about querying what they should be doing what it should include should they you know give all this other information that they're thinking of so hopefully today we'll be able to give lots of information lots of feedback and hopefully get through as many queries as we possibly can now i'm just going to add a comment um to the chats there we go um all it says is that if you would like to share your query letter with us today pop the details in the comment section and we will try and get through as many as we possibly can um obviously we, we've got lots of people join i can see them popping up popping up popping up which is fantastic mark and i will try and get through as many as possible however please only do one query um and, and once we give you the feedback we'll have to move on to the next person because we want to try and help as many people as possible so if we do give you feedback write all the notes down and then go and work on it um we don't need to see it again in today's show because obviously we've got many many to go through um i think that sounds fair don't you mark mm. yeah you want to try and get through as many as possible um now before we go straight to the queries I just as a as a top literary agent, Mark, I just want you to quickly go over what people should have in their query letter. What is the standard format for a query letter? Because obviously we've got lots of new authors that have joined us today. So, yeah, I think a query letter should all fit on one page, uh, you know, up front and one to two sentences has have the hook or what the book's about. Uh, you know, in like a very quick, short elevator pitch fashion, you know, you can mention a couple of comparative titles, books that you feel are similar to your book in some way that were recent best-selling books, and then maybe a paragraph or two about some of the exciting plot details of your book without too many spoilers, and then a paragraph, you know, of uh, relevant writing experience and writing credentials in the way of an author bio, and then that's it. You open Fantastic. the letter, you close the letter, and all on one page. Fantastic. Now, just an FYI for all our new authors, there are a couple of places that I, I would definitely recommend to search for literary agents, and that is Publishers Marketplace and Query Tracker. Both have legitimate lists of, of agents. Now, I'm so sorry if you can hear any banging and noises. My house is in chaos at the moment with work being done. Um, and unfortunately, even though they're supposed to be taking a break, I can hear, still hear banging. So I apologize. You'll just have to just grin and bear it. Um, OK, we're going to say we're going to go to the comments straight away because we've got lots and lots of people joining us. Um, we've got Heather. She says hello to you both from Gemma and I. And Heather will be querying soon. She's started um, her new novel, which is fantastic. OK, Vikram has got a comment for us. Says, Mark, thanks for your time. It means a lot to us aspiring authors. I have written a trilogy. Each book is around 80,000 words. Do you have any advice on how to pitch a three book series to an agent? Hmm. Um, I think it's worth mentioning. It's, you know, planned to be a trilogy or series. But to also say that um, the first book, you know, is strong enough to stand alone and be open ended enough that way. Um, less so agents, but publishers don't feel like they have to overcommit to something that if they need to buy the first book, see how it does, then they can very easily buy other books in the series if they if they'd like to. And I would recommend having um, short descriptions ready to go for um, you know the, the later books in the series. Yeah. Yeah, absolutely. Absolutely. Uh, we've got Peggy who's joined us as well. Hello, Peggy. And James has joined us as well. He's been looking forward to this since it was announced, apparently, which is fantastic. Welcome, welcome, James. Um, Heather says, I am currently in early development, editing, rewriting stages 
from my second draft. So when I have my manuscript as perfect as I can get it, this is the query letter I have ready to submit with it. Thank you in advance for your time reading it and for your feedback. Uh, let's try and, I'm not sure I can get all of this up. <laughs> let's have a look. Okay. Okay, Heather, I can't see all of it. Um, and I want to read the whole thing for you, darling. So what I would recommend, Heather, if you can, I'm going to turn my phone back on. Heather, if you can send it to me in a message, um, a private message, and then I can read out the whole thing. I think that's probably the best thing. And then I can read it all out in one go. Um, let me just double check. Sure. sure. Or, you know, also it might be easier for people to just sort of, because really the, the hook, the pitch should just be a couple of sentences. So. Yes. If they want to do that, we can get through that yeah. much more easily. And, and the, that way the messages won't get clipped. Uh, agreed. Agreed. So just add your hook and your actual pitch for your story. Um, and then we can go from there. Um, it's so frustrating. And honestly, we're, we're doing something new, aren't we? So we're, we're learning as we go, which is uh, which is always good. Uh, we've got hello from Laurie. Hello, Laurie. Um, thank you for joining us. And Heather has sent it. Look at this. She's misefficient. Okay, so I'm going to read it out. Let's have a look. Okay. Okay. I'm. This is Heather's. Heather Skinner. I am pleased to be querying for my novel entitled The Forest Floor. My credentials include winning a local short story contest in May of 2021 and ongoing education in the writing field with online classes I am taking. I also enjoy being an active part of the reading and writing community through my book club hosted by Heather Skinner um, pages on YouTube and Facebook. And then we get to the story pitch. The forest floor is about love Nikolaus, who is trying to start trying to start over two years after losing her hearing and thus losing sounds that used to trigger. I'm not sure how to pronounce this. Synthesia's colours flowing out from her wings. I hope I've pronounced that correctly. It's not a word I'm familiar with. As colours suddenly begin to return, she finds out there are layers of deception to uncover about the new world she thought she knew, about who her family and those close to her really are, and about the role she plays that was fated since the rule of the Greek gods. I've written it as a fantasy YA that can be enjoyed into adult age ranges. I would appreciate the opportunity to continue writing this writing in this world the titles would continue to be named after each layer of the rainforest leading up to the top emergent layer final book of the series i would also love the opportunity to create a companion picture book to go along with the forest floor per the adorable request from my six-year-old daughter other works i could provide at this time for submission to you would be a variety of picture book manuscripts and ideas um it then goes on to details about heather what do you think uh i think it well first having a version of that which is distilled into a very short short pitch like the one or two sentences and then the having some comp titles handy because uh, it sounds like young adult fantasy um so maybe some what some bestsellers from the ya children's fantasy category and um yeah it sounds like an interesting start um i don't know about the co the companion book you know although maybe publishers would do something like that as like promotional material you know that's supplemental to the book yes um but uh, it sounds like a good start and um you know pretty unique so um yeah I would definitely say with Heather's, uh, I uh, there's such good information there. But I think if I was editing the the query letter, I would definitely shorten it and pick out. I think it's important, isn't it, for authors to pick out the the main key points and make it as dramatic and as intriguing as possible. Um, 
so losing losing her hearing um the fact that it normally creates patterns with you know colorful patterns with her wings that is a quite a good good point to to keep in there um but also making it a bit more dramatic around the deception because obviously, you know, most stories have to have some sort of conflict or something to overcome. And I think that needs to be a bit more, a li little bit more dramatic and maybe condense it down a little bit. Um, but I must admit, I'm very intrigued by that one. It does sound fantastic. Uh, thank you for sharing that, Heather. Um, I always say, oh, Josephine's joined us. Hello, Josephine. Thank you for joining us from the UK. Um, I always say to my clients, I think it's important to look at what is already out there, isn't there? Because a lot of the big, big book franchises and the big movie franchises have a really epic hook that just grips you straight away. You see it immediately. Um, and then they, their description is just as dramatic. You know, I when I talk to my clients, I always say to them, look at the look at the book, the the movie trailer for like Braveheart and, 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 you know, Divergent and things like that, because they're always so gripping. And <laughs> when you hear it or read it, you almost want to go da, 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 mm. at the end because it has that sort of feel, doesn't it? Um, we've also got Tom who's joined us. Hello, Tom. Hi, Tom. He says, great to see Mark back on the Witty Writers Show. Thanks, Beth and Mark. You are so welcome. Um, Mark and I have both recently moved, so we've both had a lot to deal with. <laughs> it's been uh, it's been uh, a journey. Um, Lynette has joined us. She says hello to you both. Looking forward to learning how to pitch for introverts who can only pretend to be outgoing for about twenty minutes, asking for a friend. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Lynette, that's so funny. Okay. I love it. I love it. We've also got Theodore, who's joined us. Hello, Theodore. And we've also got Ruben. Um, Ruben has given us his query letter. Ruben, we can't see all of it, unfortunately. So uh, if you could message me with your whole query letter, uh, just send me a personal message. Um, I will make sure that I've got all my messages. Yeah, or, or also, again, a, the best use of time is if people just want to write one or two sentences because then you know this exactly. nothing gets lost and, and exactly then... let me just uh go down to that okay um let's see what we've got so far okay dear whoever my debut novel queen bee follows clement justice zavanian a modern day Noah who was born to bear the weight of the world as he witnessed the collapse of civilization and fulfills his destiny by becoming a beacon of light to the survivors. Now, I don't know about you, Mark, but straight away, when I read that, I think it needs to be shorter sentences to be more gripping. Um, so, for example, um, my debut novel, Queen Bee, follows Clement Justice Zavanian, a modern-day Noah who was born to bear the weight of the world. Full stop. Clement witnesses the collapse of civilization and fulfills his destiny by becoming a beacon of light to the survivors. So just splitting that long sentence into two makes it a bit more dramatic, I think. And then, yeah, I think that that could be enough for just beginning it. I mean, and to further simplify things, this probably this epic dystopian and apocalyptic tale of global scope Um appeals to the higher nature of humanity yeah and you know just to you know look at it in terms of economy of language and make the best of the the time and space you know writers have to present their work to agents and editors to grab their attention right away yeah and there's a good hook there as well i mean you know a modern day noah um i mean that's a great hook to start off with so um clement a modern day noah born to bear the weight of the world to me that's a great hook mm. so i i think we need to look at hooks and 
as as you said, just condensing it down to make it a bit more dramatic, I think. Mm. Uh, we've also got Darlene. Hi, Darlene from California. Thank you. Thank you. And we've also got a new viewer called Denise. Hello, Denise. She said, what makes you see money in a query? That's a good uh, question. Probably three things. One is a well-written query letter. You know, that's the first indication to me that if someone can write a good letter, they might be able to write a good book. And uh, something that sounds exciting in terms of, you know, the meat, actual meat and potatoes of the book. Like, is this an interesting and unique story? Right. Yeah. And then lastly, who the author is, their background in writing, their experience with writing. Exactly. Exactly. And also, I mean, it might be a super hot genre right now. You, you know, sometimes it's just hitting the market at the right time, isn't it? If there's a big push on, say, fantasy, then if a fantasy story that comes across your desk, that might be slightly different. But you think it could be really hot right now. That can make a make a big difference as well. Um, we've also got a message from Risha. Hello, Risha. She says, how do we send our query letters? Oh. OK, Mark's popped off for a second. We'll get him back in a second. Don't worry. Um, so, Risha, there are many ways that you can do this. But the most standard way is to either go to the literary agent's website um, where some of them have an online form that you can fill out. Or most literary agents will actually have their details there with their email and what they expect. Um the best way to do this is to go through. There we go. He's back. <laughs> <laughs> that was kind of dramatic. <laughs> well, was, da, da, da. <laughs> Technical difficulties. Sorry yeah. about that. That's fine. Um, the joys of being live. I was just telling Risha um, that there are two main ways to contact agents, and that's by either going through their website and doing their online form, or going to the website and seeing how they want it via email. And then you normally give a description, don't you, of how many pages you want to be sent? Uh, yeah, I, you on want. our website, yeah, we have a, our submission guidelines. Um, you just go to tridentmediagroup.com forward slash submissions. And they have instructions there and you fill out the form and you select the name of the person that you want to send, uh, you know, your submission to. Um, so the uh, you know at most agencies i think go about it that way very few of them are taking self-addressed stamped envelopes anymore uh, most of them prefer i think that way yeah i think most uh, the last time i queried i think most of the time it was an online form um and you generally get an email once you filled out the form to say that it has been received what sort of time frame you're likely to get a reply. Um, and sometimes the replies are fairly standard. Um, but, you know, the main thing is, is to go through legitimate sites to find legitimate literary agents. And I know I keep repeating this, but it's so important because I get so many emails and messages literally every week. Never pay a literary agency to publish your book. Don't do it. If it's a legitimate and well-respected literary agency like Tri Trident Media Group, um, they will pay you in advance if they think your book is going to earn money. Um, you know, at the end of the day, um, and that can vary, obviously, um, but you should never have to pay a literary agent or a publishing company to, to publish your books. Right. Our work is commission-based and... Um... Agencies should not charge what's called a, a reading fee to basically read a, a query letter or a manuscript. We just we do that in order. We just read material to find you know new potential clients, and we don't charge clients anything other than after we were to sell a book to a publisher, a commission. Yeah, exactly. So, yeah, there's. Um, so if the if the book sells and the author earns, so does the the agent and the, the publishing house so that that's the way it works um I, as i said i've got so many messages and comments constantly about this um but for those who have only just joined us if you do want to query and find a legitimate agent um like mark and, and a 
you know, and, and other agents go through mar uh, Publishers Marketplace and Query Tracker. They have it listed. But also do your research. It's super important. There's no point in querying an agent who doesn't represent your genre. So always, you know, research and look at the agents and make sure that they do actually represent the type of book that you want to pitch. Um, OK, we got a question from Ashley. Uh, hi, Ashley, she says. So my question is, I've had two agents request fulls. She means full manuscript for those who are new, um, but ultimately pass. They always say my writing is funny and quirky, but just not for them. I'm torn as to what to do. Is it worth it to get a developmental editor to look at my manuscript? Mm. It's a tough call because publishing is such a subjective business. Um, even best-selling authors, you know, people can read James Patterson and feel two completely different ways about it. Yeah. Um, so, you know, I wouldn't be discouraged. I'd say just keep, keep um, trying and uh, see what the other responses are and if something connects in the right way. And, you know, with regard to doing a, an edit on the manuscript before, approaching publishers, it's something you, you really have to think about because first of all, it's expensive. And second of all, you know, you have to think if it's it going, if it's going to be worth it, it'll probably benefit the manuscript no matter what. But um, some editing does take place at the level of the agency before publishers are approached. Um, and even at the publishing house too, after a book's acquired, but same time, it can't hurt to have a, a manuscript and a query letter that's as polished as can be before approaching agents. So if it's if it's reasonably within reach, why not? Yeah. I mean, the fact that two agents have already asked for to read the full manuscript is a really, really good sign. So mm. I mean, that means that your query letter is obviously working. It's getting the interest. Mm. Um, but, you know, maybe it's just it's not for them. And and who's to say they haven't already just picked up a client with a similar book? You just mm -hmm. never know. Um, but keep trying, Ashley. Keep trying. Um, we've also got Laurie. Hello. She says, if you query an agent and it's not a good fit for them, but they invite you to send another project to them, would you directly message that same agent when you are ready? What's the most respectful and appropriate way to do that? Very good question. Um, I would, again, go by the guidelines of the the submission form on the website. Our, For instance, our form says, I think it's something like either 30 or 45 days, maybe something like that. If you don't hear a response, it, it might equate with a, a pass, and then you could try other agents at the agency at that point if you want. And at that point, of course, you could try to query the same agent again. But, you know, if they weren't, I think if they weren't responding to your work the first time, unless it was simply the subject matter of the book, as opposed to the way in which, you know, maybe it was written, um, then it might be worth trying a different agent at the agency or a different agency at that point. So you're just not running up you know, kind of against the same wall. Um, yeah. 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 But it, could be worse, right? it couldn't hurt, I suppose. Yeah, exactly. Exactly. And 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 they, if they if they have invited her to share future work, then it might be worth you know just adding in in the new query. Um, thank you for inviting me to show you other work, as per our last conversation, uh, just to remind the agent that they did ask you to, to resubmit a new work because, you know, I, I mean, how many queries do you get a day? Could be hundreds. Oh. I mean, at a agency, <laughs> you just multiply that. So. Yeah, exactly. So sometimes it's always worth reminding an agent that they have asked to see your future work um, because that way they go, oh, okay, maybe I did. Well, Look at this a bit more closely. Um, Lynette has uh, sent me um, a query. Let's have a look. Okay, so I'm going to get right down to the crunch. Let's have a look. Okay. With the hook, without an end, there can be no beginning. 
Freshly single, Gillian Fleming spent years building a family life she thought was perfect. It was not. Her husband left and her daughter is heading off to college, but there is no time to sink into a funk now. Her beloved grandfather is in a health crisis and it's up to Gillian to care for him and his dilapidated beach house. Each chapter brings new stories. Sweet characters come and go with each of their own secrets, unique romance challenges, the discoveries of love and women's friendship. Interesting. Okay. So is this one full length novel? Because it's a little bit misleading to say each chapter brings yeah. new stories. Is it a collection of stories? I'm just, okay. Let's have a look. Okay. She says, recently I've had a short story in an anthology and a full novel of women's fiction, both published traditionally. Um, let me see. Okay. I think, I think it's multiple main characters, if you like. Um, it says, Margaret just wants her husband's memory back. Oh, this is a full novel, she says. Mm -hmm. Margaret just wants her husband's memory back. Carol, the klutzy shopper who is always the first to snag a deal. The Beach Biddies book club whose members dream of writing a novel. Beth, a young mother of too much on her plate and more on the way. So I think she's given us multiple characters. And it does sound ex extremely intriguing. Um, but I think it needs to be about one main person, really, the pitch. She says, Gillian begins reinventing her life and the old beach house with the help of loyal friends and a man from her past. Summer finds Gillian with everything she wants, offering advice, insight and inspiration with a side of humour that fills her soul. Gillian's chance to journey home to the small town she never forgot might be exactly what she needs, but is being owner of the Sea Sprite in everything her heart wants. Mm. So I think, again, it needs to be a bit more condensed and just focused on Gillian, the main character. What do you think? Yeah, it sounds like good women's fiction. Um you know, to know some of the background of the previous book would help because the success of that book is really going to determine the, the success of this sophomore novel, you know, yes. like publishers look at the prior sales numbers and if it's not good, then you have to think about how to reposition yourself with this book. So you know, that'll be important to know. And then where the story, the short story uh, had been published um, and then some comp titles might help. Like, it seems like, um, I don't know if this is like meant to be lighthearted or darker. It sort of has like darker beginnings, but then there's some silver linings. So I don't know if it was like Mary Alice Monroe type of book, like female friendships and beach houses and things like that. Or if it was like kind of darker domestic suspense. So just to, I think the comps will also help with that a little bit to, to know better. Um, but yeah, I think it's a good start. Yeah, definitely. Definitely. Um, she says absolutely light. So it is a light hearted story. And she said the first novel was published by a small press publisher with no reach at all. Um, we've all been there. It is. It's, oh, she said no darkness. So it's a completely light hearted story. So it'd be fantastic. Summer beach read by the sounds of it. It really does. Thank you for sharing that, Lynette. I really appreciate that, my angel. Um, now, we've got one from Sean. Um, he says, here's a super, super compressed version of mine. Thank you, Sean. Appreciate it. Beyond the Overcast Sky is a high concept literary spectacular fiction complete at 90,000 words. The Age of Miracles meets the tone of the Sequoia... Nagamatsu, how high we go in the dark. For 30 years, the world has lived without sun until today. Great hook. Makaya is a scavenger in a dim, sunless world where nothing green can grow and society is slowly crumbling. It's been this way for 30 years, ever since the unexplained worldwide weather phenomenon known as. Not really the end cut off, but that is a, that is a, I enjoyed that. <laughs> yeah, I think that portion you read about the sun, uh, the the uh, Earth having lived without the sun for thirty years, is an interesting hook. It's very like 
kind of snow piercer, how there were, they're basically, there's a generation that remembers a time before everyone had to board that train in, in an apocalypse. And there's a, a generation that uh, had no memory of that because they were born on that, that train or whatever. Um, you know, I think you can leave out the word count um, because we, we're going to assume that writers know what they're doing, inquiring agents and editors, that they've learned what normal word count ranges are for books. They adhere to them. So to me, that just takes up space. Yeah. Um, and uh, the comps seemed good. I'm not as familiar with them. Um, uh, you know, to know, know more about the writer's background, I guess later on we would find that in a query letter, not so much in the hook. Um, but sounds interesting, sounds unique, kind of like um, there was a movie a, a while ago called The Chronicles of Riddick. And I think that actor Vin Diesel um, and everyone lives underground, the world without light. They have like special eye goggles, kind of like, you know, they live like mole people underground or whatever. Um, so it could be unique and interesting. Um, yeah. yeah, I really enjoyed that. And, and the nice thing is, is Sean kept the sentences short dramatic uh, which which creates that intrigue so well done sean i really enjoyed that one mm. that was very very good mm. okay heather says thank you both i took lots of notes this is all super helpful info you are so welcome um we've also got one from michael hello michael thank you for joining us um he said oh my gosh no, did we I skip one or no um da, da, da. Maybe Vikram after Heather. Let's have a look. Did we already hear from Vikram? I don't think I, we did. I think Vikram's after. Okay. After this one. After this one. Okay. Now, I'm going to struggle with this one. <laughs> Hylothe Pathium. Pathiasism. I'm not sure how to pronounce that, Michael. I'm so sorry. Hylopathism. Belief in the sen sentience of all matter. Animal and vegetable drives Jared, a God-fearing gourmet chef, to extremes in an effort to justify himself to the vi violence of his craft. Mm. Again, might be worth trying to sort of condense that a little bit more, I think. Complete at 80,000 words. Um, Hylopath blends literary and commercial fiction into a work of psychological suspense with recipes. Interesting. Will it appeal to a wide range of adult readers from culinary enthusiasts and amateurs of philosophy and theology to fans of character driven thrillers and literary horror? I think so. If we leave it up for just one moment, I think um, having a title that's just easy to pronounce and, you know, catchy, I think is probably the way to go. You know, a lot of people are going to struggle with this title to to pronounce it yeah, and um because it's just not a word we regularly see a lot and um uh belief in drives i i would just say you know okay so the the hook belief in the sentience of all matter animal and um i would just say belief in the sentience of, of all matter drives a God-fearing chef to uh, extremes in an effort to justify the violence of his craft. Yes. Uh, and then leave out the word count. Um, you know, you could say... Um, it could even yeah, be... Yeah, I would just leave the rest out. Yeah, I, it could even be... It could even be slightly shorter than that. You know, Jared, a God-fearing gourmet chef, driven to extremes to justify his, his violence. Um, or Something that short, you know, it can, yeah. it can condense right down, can't it? But it's intriguing. Mm -hmm. Very, mm -hmm. very intriguing. Thank you very much, Michael. We appreciate you sharing. That is absolutely uh, awesome. Now we've got Vikram. There we go. Hi, Vikram. Thank you for joining us as well. Um, he says, here's an excerpt from my query letter. A rebellion, a deadly plague, and two teenagers. What could possibly go right? 
it's a good hook. Very good hook. Welcome to Union City, home to two unruly boys who've grown weary of serving the regime. June is a measly loader. Day in and day out, he loads area night canisters onto conveyor belts, only to watch them disappear into tunnels leading to the outside world. Isaac enjoys a more stimulating job at the area night refinery, spending his waking hours mining this potential fuel. So I think um, just keeping the hook to a rebellion, comma, a deadly plague, comma, and two teenagers, M dash, like a long dash. Yes. What could possibly go right? That's it. It's all you need. Yeah. As to the names of the characters, I see there's like a lot of kinds of like nods, like a tip of the hat to Frank Herbert's Dune and Isaac Asimov. And I think, you know, readers of science fiction will probably catch that very quickly and easily. Yeah. And I don't know if that's necessarily a good thing or not. I mean, it's nice to, again, want to kind of tip, tip the hat to the, the masters of that genre, but I think it's better to maybe, so it doesn't take the reader out of the story as much. Like, you know, if one of my characters, his, their name was like Shakespeare, you know, people right away would less so be thinking of my character and more so thinking of William Shakespeare. Yeah. And, and, and subconsciously comparing the two. I would imagine as well. When you throw something in like that, that people automatically start comparing it because you've triggered that association. But yeah. I think the hook is good, you know? Yeah, absolutely. I was very, very impressed with that. Um, I see another one from Michael. I'm sorry, Michael, we can't go back over it, unfortunately, because we've got so many to go through, but we appreciate it. We really, really do. Um, we've got Ru Ruben says, thanks, Beth and Mark, for, so much for your feedback. You are very welcome. Mark is so good. Um, okay, Risha says, I meant to say, how do we send our query letters to the show? Oh, okay. Risha, all, all we need is your hook and your story description. And that's it. The, the rest, obviously, because we, we can only fit so much on the, on the comments section. So if you just give us literally your hook and your story description, your pitch, um, that's all we need. And just add it in the comments. Oh, that side. Add it, add it in the comments and we'll pop it up for you. Um, Ashley says, thank you. You are very welcome, Ashley. Um, Starla said that was a great question earlier. It really, really was. Um, Laurie says, thank you, Be uh, Mark and Beth. You are welcome. And she says, yes, that helps. Oh, I, I love the fact we're helping so many people. It is fantastic. Starla's joined us. Hello, Starla. She is an amazing Ooh. author. She says, what is the best approach for African-American writers? I've heard it is extra challenging for people of colour to find agents willing to take our manuscripts. I think it's quite the opposite agents are and editors are really looking for people lots of diverse backgrounds right now more so than ever i would say um you know it's probably harder for a straight white male in publishing now than it's ever been um so i think it's a good thing because um again publishers are really hungry for like new kind of diverse stories and different voices and things like that, whether it be your religion or your sexual orientation or your, or your ethnic background or what. So, so um, even neurodiverse people. So yeah. publishers are really looking for that. It's a good time. Yeah. And the thing is when, when you're, when you're querying an agent, um, unless you, unless you actually tell the agent Agents don't know your ethnicity or, or anything about you unless you tell them. So so as long as your query is super good with a great hook, a great pitch, um, it doesn't matter what your background is. You'll you mm. get that agent's interest, aren't you? Mm. Uh, especially if, you know, if your story really grips the agent off the query letter page. Um, so, and you, and you're right. There is such a big 
shortage and people searching for something new, different from from diverse cultures. Um, I think it's absolutely wonderful. Um, okay, Josephine, she says, Beth and I developed my own short hook. We did. Mm. And we kept on doing it. It was it was great. Mm. Um, Lynette says, thank you so much. You are so welcome. You are very welcome. Mm -hmm. um, and oh, there we go. Sean says, thank you. You're welcome. Um, and we've got Yvonne who's joined us. Hello, Yvonne. She says, thank you for this great event. You are very welcome. Mm -hmm. um, it's, it's been it's been coming for, back for a while. Um, Michael says, thank you for the feedback. Mm -hmm. You are welcome. Uh, Vikram says, thank you, Mark. Super helpful information. Mm -hmm. And CJ, she says, a scorned mistress, a hopeful gal and a widow find their lives tangled together. Yeah, she's really got the idea behind what it means to have like a good punchy hook. You know? Exactly. Exactly. That is a very, very good. Hook. And I like the fact that she's put a scorned mistress first because straight away that's like intrigue right there. I absolutely love it. Um, Josephine says, talking of hooks, I use for my book called Listen. You never know what you will hear. I Ooh. like that. Yeah. Uh, play on words. That is fantastic. So I think less, that's less is really more. You know, as storytellers, people tend to think, I need to be expansive because a book is so big, but it's not about that. It's about intriguing people. So they say, oh, tell me more. Yes. Not, oh, tell me too much. No. <laughs> That's so true. Tell me more. I love that. I love that. Okay. Uh, Barrington. Hi, Barrington. Um, says, I've heard that authors should include comp books in a query should it be included yeah we talked about that for we sure did. we did it's super important isn't it and as mark said you know agents and publishers want to have comparisons because especially if if it's compared to a book that's done well and it's it's been hugely popular because that gives them an indication of the possibilities of how well your book might do um and also it's, if you can do a comparison with a well-known book you know the agents more like to have read it themselves and straight away get an idea of what type of story it is isn't that right mark mm. Mm. Yeah. okay let's have a look Got some, loads of comments um starla says thank you for the info great show very informative you are welcome we're so glad to be helping so many people um let's have a look Right, Sean says, the first chapter of my novel recently placed third in an international first chapter competition. Should I include this in mm -hmm. the query letter? Yes, and if so, yes. and if so, where? In the author bio. There we go. Author bio. Thank you very much, Lee. Um, Yvonne says, my Huff Post piece was viewed by over 1.5 million readers. Since I'm gaining traction, can I query literary agents? With two to three chapters, I've published in um, NYT, Salon, Newsweek, and elsewhere. Well, I'll screenshot it, and I'll go look at your article later. Um, it's That's a good platform to, to have been published there, to have gained so many views. Um, books, nonfiction books, if assuming it's that, are sold on you know, two to three sample chapters, uh, sometimes one or two sample chapters, and basically a, a book proposal. But it's important to know what the book's about first. Yeah. So, yeah, absolutely. Oh, I and see the link there. Yeah, yeah, very kindly put it underneath. So, thank you for that, Yvonne. Um, we've also got Denise's question. She says, Hot genres. What would you like to see more of in the future? Question mark. Uh, you know, it's hard to say because never know until you see it. And then um, sometimes the stuff can change. But, um, you know, I'd say fiction is still very female driven, you know, female protagonists, um, women stories focused for women, really. 
uh, kind of the male-oriented thrillers are harder to sell uh, in more recent years. Um, lots of diverse stories, um, you know, writers who have great um, backgrounds in writing. Um, in terms of nonfiction, the platform's got to be massive, not just the ideas unique. Uh, yeah. It's a, it's a it's a constantly changing business, isn't it? It I think publishing is its own animal. You know? Yeah, the amazing thing is it's still at the end of the day just about good writing and good storytelling. So of course it goes without saying. You need that. Yeah, absolutely, absolutely. Uh, Barrington says thank you. I enjoy. Uh, oh, I joined late. We don't mind Barrington. Better later than never. That's what we say. Um, Yvonne says I'm writing a memoir about adoption and mental illness. Mm. Mm. Now, I think those two topics are fairly hot right now. Not massively hot, but they are. Um, uh, there's a lot more out there, isn't there, to do with adoption and mental illness, especially because it's, you know, such a high, high priority health issue at the moment. Um, but adoption also, because there are places that are, opening up their records and making it easier for adoptees uh, to, to reconnect with their birth parents and stuff. Um, so that's a fairly hot topic at the moment, Yvonne. So good luck to you. I, I wish you all the best. I really do. Um, now, I can't believe it, but we're nearly up to an hour already. It's gone so quick. It's gone so quick. Um, if you aren't watching this live and you would like us to have a quick look at your query letter, maybe give you a couple of little tips or whatever, um, pop them in the comments. Um, just the hook and the actual story description, the pitch, um, and, and Mark and I will try and, and have a look when we get a chance. I do have more time than Mark, I have to say, because Mark is so busy. Um, obviously with clients and queries and everything else as well. So so we will try our best. Um, but just to go over quickly for our new viewers, because I can see them popping on and off, on and off of the space to be working, I think. Um, make sure you keep it short and sweet. Make it gripping, intriguing. Um, and make sure when you do look for an agent, look for agents who cover your genre. There's no point in sending a query letter to somebody who doesn't actually represent your genre. It's just a waste of your time and energy. So go to Publishers Marketplace. Query Tracker is a good one as well. I love Query Tracker because it does what it says on the box. It, it helps you track who you've sent to. You can mark who's replied to you. You can mark the dates and everything. So it makes it super easy to keep tabs of who you've actually contacted because um, it's a bit of a pain um, if, if if somebody forgets and they end up querying three agents in the same week for the same company, <laughs> doesn't help no one. It just looks like spamming. Um, well, I, Beth, I have to run, but maybe we do a part two, you know, if there are other people who send their pitches, you know, later on. That would be fantastic. That would be fantastic. Mark, thank you so much for everything today. You've been thank absolutely you awesome. Um, please join us for the next Witty Writers Show and keep tabs. Please like and subscribe to my page because then you'll get updates of new events that are coming up and you'll also get reminders as well. Uh, but thank you, everyone, for joining us today. Thank you so much, Mark. And we will see you next time on the Witty Writers Show. So thank you, everybody. Remember, if you want your query letter looked at, put it in the comments, just the, the hook and the pitch and uh, Mark and I will either try and get back to you in the comments or we will save it for our next Witty Writers show. Um, so thank